Howdy. Welcome to College Station, Texas, home of the Texas A&M Aggies. And tonight, the lights are shining brightly on the home of the 12th man as this crowd is ready to gig them and get another season of Aggie football underway. And boy, do we have a fun one ahead. Top 10 team, target on their back, going on their road and right into the snake pit. As we'll see the number eight team in the country, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish, taking on the 24th ranked team in the land, the Texas A&M Aggies. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. And the Aggies ready to put total leather and get this season started. Returner's going to try to see what he can get. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. So Notre Dame's offense will get the first crack at it here. And there he is, a man who makes an entire stadium hold its breath every time he touches the ball, Jesse. His defense better have a lot of breath in this game, too, because he gets better as the game goes on. He's the kind of guy, David, who can wear a defense down. And he is the primary focus. That's what... Snatches it on the right. Can anyone catch him? And they'll do more than move the chains. They'll move that thing more than 30 yards down the field before he's finally stopped. Well, after that last play, you can see how electrifying this guy is and how special he is after he makes the catch. If I'm on offense, I'm trying to find a lot of ways to get him touches in this game. They say it's still a game of field position, and that last one just flipped this baby. They've got it first and ten in the red zone. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Nice job on the defense, just being very sound, understanding what they were seeing. Yeah, a lot of times these running backs force miss tackles and make you miss and make big plays. This defense did a good job of not letting that happen. He'll run it again. Pick up of one, it's down at the 11. Well, they'd love to pick up this conversion and go to work with a first and goal. From the gun, leaves it on the inside with the back. Picked his way through the traffic for six, but it'll be fourth down and three yards to go. Now it looks as if they'll settle for the field goal try. And he'll try it from the right. Hash and the angle shouldn't be too bad from this distance. Absolute shank. Missed. And the score will stay right where it is after that miss. You can't miss opportunities like that. You're playing on the road in a hostile environment. You're trying to seize momentum right out of the gate. You get a nice drive to start the game, and then you miss the field goal. You don't get any points to show for that. If they're going to win this one, guys, they've got it. And the heat gets there, and they get him down at the 14-yard line. The Irish generating heat from the linebacker position. Uh, Mike Stonebreaker, Manti Teo type play. And when you can get linebackers that can get after the quarterback, that can be a force on first X phase, make his life heck, really nice job by the linebacker there. They'll try to find a more productive play this time on second and long from the 14. Good surge up front, give him four out to the 18. Make up the game plan and not a lot on the play sheet for this. Third and long from inside their own 20. Looking to pass. It's Wegman. They're bringing heat. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. Man, you talk all week about setting the tone, quieting this crowd. Don't let him get involved. You know how you do that? Get a sack and force a punt on the first possession of the football game. That's a heck of a start for this defense.
The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. Three and out, they got stuck in reverse. They hope the punt can bail them out. So from his own end zone, the punt is away. He gets a block. He's brought down, but a really solid effort to pick up every bit of yardage he could on the punt return. Here come the Irish, back on offense. You want to talk about taking the wind out of your sails, drive the ball down the field, and miss the field goal, David. You know what? Don't leave it up to kickers. Execute better offensively. I think you move the ball nice. you got to keep that in mind. But Palmer, I think you got to stay aggressive and don't settle for field goals. Yeah, because you got to know there's just no margin for error right now. You just have got to be able to execute at a high level. Second down after that incompletion. Leaves it with the back. <laughs> They ripped off seven on that one. Now a third down and three. Listen, you, you got to be able to know what play to call and what hole to go through. Like the line blocks for a certain hole. Good job getting through the hole, getting on this block, getting a nice positive game, making your situation really good on the next down. He's looking to throw on third and short. He wants to go deep. And it's knocked away downfield. The DB getting a hand in there. Got to give the defense credit on that play, taking everything away, forcing the incompletion. Now it's decision time. Fourth and short, and you're in. And they fake. It's a fake, and the kicker's going to throw it. And the pass is incomplete off the fake field goal, and sometimes you just outsmart yourself. I know they wanted to be aggressive, throw caution to the wind. They might have been better off playing it safe there. He wastes no time and comes out throwing. And he was hit just as he released it, and it falls to the turf. We're still early in this ball game, but this QB has been hit several times already, been sacked. This is one of those games that the ice bath is going to be your friend afterwards. We're just getting started. It's still in the first quarter for goodness He stopped again. They went right back to him, and he still found no running room at all. This offense really needs to get something going. Hunt on the opening drive, and now a third and ten coming up. Pressure coming. And the quarterback is snowed under. Pretty nice as a defense, right? When you can go nickel, put five DBs on the field, and not have to blitz anyone, trusting your front four to get the job done on third down, and they do it right there getting the sack. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. Makes a move. He was hoping for a little more running room, but they're able to get him down at the 45. Notre Dame has the ball and ready to get moving. He's going to pass. Fires to the wideout. Incomplete. He had it right in his hands for the pick, and I believe he might have been thinking about those big plays he's known for. Instead, it'll be second down. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. Using his legs, it's Price. And he'll find enough running room to get it just short of midfield at the 49. back it's Leonard fires to the big fella puts him in the spin cycle and the catch was one thing and the run even better a big pick up on that one. as they get set to snap it just about to reach the end of the quarter running to the left jukes his way for more and after the stop that is going to put a bow on this first quarter and a lot of times you want those big plays. You want those splash plays. But sometimes you're going to take some losses. You're not going to run the football overly well. But if you continue to run it, you can at least create some balance. You at least have the threat of it. Otherwise, you're just going to abandon it. And now it's just going to be a passing game. Let's see if the offenses can find a little rhythm here in the second. We'll get this quarter going with a second down play. 
Motion trying to get the defense to show his hand. Dialing up a second down pass play. And it'll be incomplete. This defense is physical in pass deep. And that's your goal. Separate man from ball to the point. And really make give him something to think about. Physically char that football. Knock it out. Nice job by the defender. On third and long, try to convert through the air. And it's incomplete despite some serious arm strength shown there. Yeah, and third and short, they choose not to run, throw the football. And I think a lot of that has to do with they know they're in field goal range. They can take the three points on the board. And for the second time tonight, they'll trot out the field goal kicker. Couldn't quite get it through, and the scoreboard remains the same. Texas A&M has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this drive. Didn't get much done on that first play of the drive. It's second and 11. They'll try the run. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. You know, defensively, you live by the blitz and you die by the blitz. That time, they dialed it up into the run play, and the linebacker able to make a nice tackle. Backing up and backing up on the first two plays. Now to try to throw it in drive on third down. Back to throw. It's Wegman trying to get to it. And the pressure was too much. They get him at the 15. That's the problem when you go empty, right? As a quarterback, you know you might get blitzed, and if you do, you better know where your hot throw is. If you don't, you're getting sacked. That time, the linebacker got to. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. Doesn't say much for your drive when you're looking forward to the punt. He's got great speed. And the punt team able to swing him to the ground. Here come the Irish back on offense. We talk about settling for points, but sometimes when you have to settle for nothing, David, it can be demoralizing. Yeah, and it can definitely be frustrating. And I think it leads you to say maybe I go for it more, but Jesse... I think this offense just needs to put another drive together and just finish strong. Yeah, and, and be a little bit less predictable, too, especially as they get closer and closer down to the end zone. Hey, five to six yards a pop. I don't know if you guys are really good at math, but that usually equals a first down every couple carries. So don't forget about the run game. Keep them honest. Pound that rock. Got the first down. Looking for more. And a really nice run and pick up there before the defense avoided disaster and stopped the really big play. From the 30-yard line on first down. He's looking to throw it. Makes the catch. It's Mitchell. And that's the look in man coverage you can throw the hitch route against, right? When the receiver's got a little bit of access and he's got some room to work with, against press, you're risking a pick six. So good decision there by the Q, knowing that was a good look to throw in. And that'll be enough to give Notre Dame a first down. Well, the offense knew what they needed to get that first down, so they dial up the running play, and they get just enough to keep the drive alive. This first half of offense won't go on the highlight reel so far. Starting to get things moving, it's first and ten. Throws to the wideout. Reels it in in the end zone. Touchdown, Fighting Irish. Ready to try the point after. And he's got the extra point, and it's 7-0 to start this one. Let's go to the studio now and check in with Kevin Connors. Kevin, what do you got? Two very different emotions inside the locker rooms of these teams who did battle today. The Pandas managed to get the win in a close one this week, and they just shook up the college football world. And to do it on the road, no less, just incredible. The circle of life in college football.
where one team moves on feeling like kings and the other heads home licking its wounds. And Kevin Connors keeping an eye on everything all over the country. Sounds like they had a good one there. Slants against man. That wide receiver has to win right now. Right now at the line of scrimmage against that DB playing man coverage. Quarterback timing with the wide receiver. Put it on the money. Wide receiver's probably still going to get hit too. we got to hold on to that. And the defense settled in to stop that one for a short game. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt he was going down. Great job for him today. These are the types of plays where offenses impose their will. Third and short from the 45. Incomplete. And he threw that one up for grabs and into traffic. And fortunate to get it back. Man, I like the aggressiveness on third and short, trying to throw the football, take advantage of a look that they got. They weren't successful, and now it's fourth and short territory. Who knows what they're going to do? Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He'll bring it back. It's Young. He'll get it to about the 25 before they put a stop to the return. Notre Dame has the ball and ready to get moving. And David, how they would love to stick it in the end zone one more time after that last drive. And once you get the defense on their heels, you back them off a little bit, you get in a little bit of rhythm, it's really hard to stop Jesse, and they're going to try to do it again right here. And if you're this play caller, you're loving what's happening right now because everything you dialed up on that last drive ended up working out. You're just looking at your play sheet. Everything you're picking is working. Let's see if they can pull it off again here. Can't find his man as he took a shot trying to deliver that football, and it'll be second down. Got to be smart, patient, great vision. Uses all of that to get to the 29. Balls at the 29. Defense can taste getting off the field. It's third and long. Back to throw. It's Leonard getting some heat. They get him a rush, and it pays off the sack at the 20. We got a timeout here late in the first half, and they'll try to get more points on the board before the break. Boy, if they don't convert this fourth down, there will be questions to be answered. He'll try to throw and pick up the first down. Gets drilled as he releases it. The ball just trickles to the ground. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Line gets set, first down. They go to the draw. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. A lot of times those draw plays are successful when those defensive linemen run up the field, rush the quarterback, create some holes. Not this time. The defensive line did a really good job understanding that, seeing the draw play, getting the running back, getting his butt on the ground. Pocket starts to collapse. And the defense, they've got him at the 27. What a great job by this defense setting the tone early. In the first half, they've been hitting the quarterback early and often. Make him feel uncomfortable. Make him feel that pressure. Keep getting him on the ground. That's why they've built the lead. And guys, they really need to take advantage of this field position on third and long. Looking to throw, and he needs a chunk play. And this defense has maxed out this pressure. Another sack. And if your job is to irritate, to confuse, to hit, to make quarterbacks feel very uncomfortable, this defense is definitely doing their job. Six sacks. That's the way to make the quarterback feel like he's having a hard day. He's had no response. This offensive line has no response. Just a sack party. No good. After that miss, still a seven-point game, guys. Notre Dame, seven. Texas A&M, zero. Here come the Irish, back on offense. There have been a couple of missed opportunities for these offenses in the last couple of drives, Jesse. And I think for this offense here, it'd be nice to hit an explosive play, be aggressive, and really pay off. And that last drive. 
instead of having to move the ball down the field consistently and then getting stopped on fourth downs, you're right. Create some of those explosives. Take those deep shots. Make those big plays. They'll line up right at the 48-yard line on first and 10. They'll run it out of the shotgun. Got the first down and more. And he's brought down after a nice game. That's a really good-looking physical run. I'll tell you, when you think of Notre Dame football, too, you think of all the great coaches they've had, Eric Parsegian, Newt Rockney, Lou Holtz. Those guys would love what they're seeing right now. Three yards in a cloud of dust, wearing the defense down, running the football when they know you're going to do it. This is Notre Dame football to a T. Beautiful. He's up to 57 yards rushing already here in the first half. It's a season opener, but he's in midseason form. Time dwindling away as they try to put points on the board right before the half. Unleashes one deep. And he's got it! Touchdown, Irish! I think you love starting the year off with some momentum. And that's exactly what this offense is doing. They're firing on all cylinders. Defense doing their job as well. This team getting out the gates to start the season in great fashion. The AT unit on the field. And the extra point makes it 14-0. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they close the deal with a 20-yard pass for six. Straight ahead from inside is 25. Able to find enough room to get it out across the 25. He's brought down at the 26. So the offense has had enough. They'll take a knee and wrap up this first half. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. Gentlemen, what else is new? A really raucous environment there in College Station. And it's been said football is a game of inches. And guess what? Based on the comparison between third down conversion rate today and the average yard per play, how can you argue that? I mean, the low-lying fruit is to look at some of the explosive plays we've seen in panic. But really, this game is going to come down to which team is more efficient when they have the ball and how they play when it matters most. And with that, let's send it back to the guys at Kyle Field. they feel most confident in what plays their quarterback is seeing the best to go out here and execute a scoring ball. Well, and it's nice to get the ball first. Like, I got the first opportunity to close the gap a little bit, apply some great game pressure to these guys. So I think getting the ball first, driving down, scoring right here would be huge. Keep it on the ground. And he's knocked down, but there's also a flag that's been dropped. Let's check on the call. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. They'll decline the penalty here and let the result of that play stand. Third down conversions, always a huge stat, and they've got a third and long from the 27. To the air, it's Wegman. 
They're trying to get to it. And the Heat will get home, and the quarterback goes down at the 17. Yeah, and man, you talk about being down at the half. What's one thing I need to do? I, I got to protect my quarterback. In the first series here now, you're getting your quarterback hit and taken to the ground. This offense has to protect that dude at all costs. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. Three and out, they got stuck in reverse. They hope the punt can bail them out. Another punt on the way. Got to make sure those hammies and glutes all activated. Don't want any muscle pulls from overuse. Excellent coverage that time. Didn't give him any room to set up a big return. Notre Dame has the ball and ready to get moving. That last drive really productive. David wound up with a touchdown. They'll try to do it again. Yeah, so I don't expect... And they couldn't hold off the heat, and he goes down with the sack. And that's the thing about this defense. Yeah, they may be losing the game right now, but they've got difference makers on that side of the football. they got guys that can step up like that, create havoc, get a sack, create negative plays. They're going to need more of that here in the second half if they're going to win this game. With the catch, it's Collins. They make the stop, but not before he takes a chunk out of what they need to move the sticks. The defense needs to have a plan for this guy. They weren't ready for that one. Drag route running all the way across the field. The DB just can't stay with him because of his speed. And as a result, they give up a big one. This is not leather helmet era football. This is analytics around midfield, four down territory. On fourth down, looking for the completion. And that one falls incomplete. A huge stand by the defense. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. Looking for a productive play on first down. Now they'll try the right side. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. So he gets stuffed on first down, and now you have the offensive coordinator thinking a little bit. Yeah, we're probably going to have to throw it now in this second play. But what are we going to see defensively? Now that they know we're throwing, might they blitz us? Do I have to leave more guys in the block? There's a real cat and mouse game going on right now between these two coaching staffs. And he tried to do all he could. He broke one tackle, but my goodness, guys were hitting him left and right in the backfield. This is a staple for any good defensive coordinator. They want their guys to swarm to the football to gang tackle. If one guy misses, another one's there. No doubt. And the staple for the offensive coordinator and the offensive line coaches, block those guys. Don't watch them tackle all guys. And they're running out the kicker to give it a try. He says he's got a big leg. He's going to have to show it from 56 yards out. And he missed it. No good. Guys, the missed field goal and nothing changes. Still a 14-point game. Here come the Irish back on offense. These last couple of drives, Jesse, have been about the defense making clutch stand. I think for this offense, they can stay aggressive knowing that their defense is going to bail them out time and time again here. Yeah, and especially when you go for those fourth down situations, you do that a lot of times because you know your defense can make stands, make stops. They did on that last possession for you. All right, so not a home run play for the offense, but I do like the creativity, and I like how they're going to stress this defense and do it in less conventional ways. Finds a tight end. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. They'll have it at the 49, just across midfield, first and 10. Out of the gun, the running back has it. And a good, solid pick up there before the defense knocks him down. You want to talk about making it easy for an offensive coordinator. You pick up a bunch of yards on first down, make that second down really, really manageable. That's a great job by the offense. 
They get him on the ground, but it's a first down. It's hard to stop great runners. It really is. That's why you run the football consistently. you got a big offensive line, a big physical unit. You run the football like this, man, it will take a toll later. But you got to tackle this guy over and over again who has this ability to make people miss and make big plays. He got a bunch and looked close to getting a lot more, but he's got the first down. And you're going to hear this guy's name a lot. They're going to ride the big fella. He's such a stud. They're going to build the offense around him. This is just game one. And he'll finish the run in the end zone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. The offense flexes its muscle a bit and widens the gap. Take a little exhale. You know, you, you did your job. You got points. Now you put your defense in a position where, hey, go out and get another stop. We're in great shape. So the offense definitely taking care of their business. And they pick up the extra point. Kicker knocked it right down the middle. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. it inside his 25 and here he comes finally stopped after a solid return out to the 32 texas a&m has it back in the offense ready to go to work they're down by 21 points but you get a touchdown here and you do at least apply a little game pressure jesse it's true. I think for them to get back in this one at this point now, they need the quarterback to play his best football. He's going to have to be good really pre-snap, David, making sure they're in the right looks, and he's got to be really good with his decision-making. He's got to be dialed in because defensively you're giving up points. So it's not like you have the luxury of your defense playing great. The offense is going to have to score and score pretty dang quickly. Picked up two yards on that last one. They need eight on second down. Back to pass. It's Wegman. Gets it to the back. The defense wouldn't let him loose there, and it was a completion, but they lost yardage. Listen, if I'm a QB, second down, I want to check the ball down and get a manageable third down, but when this defense is flying around like this, so fast closing out, he got to that running back, got him on the ground so fast, the running back had nowhere to go. Going to let it fly, and that'll be incomplete. They certainly weren't afraid to take a shot there, and now it's fourth down. Well, at this juncture in the game, with how the scoreboard looks, no question this offense is going to have to throw to get back in the game. And it's going to be tricky now because the defense is expecting it. You're going to throw into a lot of big zone coverages with everybody's eyes on the quarterback. Not going to be easy. That nifty return sets up the offense and negates some of the yardage on the punt. Notre Dame has the ball and ready to get moving. They had this thing in a hammerlock at halftime, and now they are really ratcheting up the pressure, David. And I tell you what, this offense doesn't have to change a thing, Paul. They've done what they wanted in the first half and starting off the second half in the same fashion. And I like how they're letting different guys get involved, too. They've got so many different playmakers all over the field. He's had a day 103 yards on the ground, and with that run, he eclipses the 100-yard mark in this season opener. Time winding down in the quarter as they come to the line. Give to the running back. Bulls his way forward. Guys, we've come to the end of the quarter, and Notre Dame has the lead. And they've built a comfortable lead after three quarters of play. Let's take a look at how we've gotten here. One more period to go, and we'll see just how much fight they've got left in them. A third down play to open up this quarter. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. And he gets it out past the sticks, and Notre Dame will have a first down. Well, they needed two yards to get that first down. That's exactly what they got. Great job of execution. No secret about it. Just got to be physical, get a hat on a hat, low man wins, all the cliches to get that third down and shoot. They're looking for an advantage in the running game to the right. It's just so nice to know you can start off on first down with positive plays. Positive yards, hand the football off, set up a good second down. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. Receivers telling the quarterback what they see. 
Defense there to stop him after a gain of three, but he is inside the 32-29. Coming to the line, looking for that first down on third and short from the 29. Dropping back, it's Leonard. Fires to the tight end. They've got it just outside the red zone. They'll move the chains. It's at the 21. There are a lot of offensive coordinators out there. In a similar situation with a lead like this. Uh, they'd definitely be running the ball at this point. Uh, they'd probably take their starting quarterback out of the game, potentially, but not this year. They are still staying aggressive. They're still taking shots. They're just trying to light up the score. Works his way to the four-yard line, and they'll have it first and goal. Well, it really just feels like they are trying to make a statement to everybody in college football. They've got a lead, they've got it late, and they are still putting it on this defense. They are still letting it fly. They're airing it out, trying to light up the score. He's got it down to the one-yard line, right on the doorstep of Pater. Brings up second and goal. Second and goal for this offense. Trying to barge their way in. Touchdown, Fighting Irish! And the punishment has been extended. Yeah, and how about this offense, man? Putting another drive together, getting in the end zone. And here's the deal. Going on the road, handling these conditions in game one, they've done a phenomenal job. On to attempt the try. And the extra point makes it 28 to nothing. And for a quick update, let's go to Kevin Connors in the studio. Boys, if it's happening in college football, we've got eyes on it. Check this out. Vanderbilt is currently trailing, but this has been a back and forth affair. If that quarterback can find a little magic a la Jay Cutler, this might not be over just yet. They're trailing by just four to Virginia Tech. Just another week of college football where we've come to expect the unexpected. Fellas? Thanks for the update on that one. Kevin, let us know when it goes final. And he was hit just as he was releasing the pass, and it falls to the ground incomplete. Here comes the offense on second down. This offensive line is not going to like watching the film back uh, tomorrow when they get the opportunity because they have gotten beat time and time again up front, especially in passing situations. All of the hits, all of the sacks this quarterback has taken is the biggest reason why they're going to lose this game. Passing game very effective on second down. What about here on third? Scanning the field, it's Wegman. Unloads to the wideout. Fires the pass, intercepted dozes him and he's still running after the move they still can't get him down and a big return after the INT sets up the offense for this possession this is a beautiful situation for the defense when you're up by two plus scores and you're in this situation you know exactly what is coming it's going to be a pass they have to because the clock is their enemy great job playing pass forcing the interception almost putting the nail in the car he works his way all the way down to the three, and the defense is reeling. Now on second and goal. Tries again to get it in. Touchdown, Irish! And the pummeling has started. Everybody's getting in on the fun now for this offense. From the opening whistle, they have been up and down the field. Starters are scoring. You've got backups in the game now. And I love the play calling. These guys came to your school to play in this offense, to score touchdowns. So let them go do it. Make this defense prove they can stop. They'll try to add another to their lead. And with the extra point, the lead is even bigger. They didn't have a whole lot of real estate in front of them when they took over possession, but they wasted no time. Couple of plays into the end zone. Almost ready to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. Catch 
catches it inside his 20. Chance to really gain some ground. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. Texas A&M has it back, and we say howdy to the Aggie offense again. After that last pick, David, they really need to take care of the ball this time. No doubt. And, and Palmer, I want to know what Spurrier said to you on the sideline after a pick. Do that again, and you'll be right here beside me for the rest of the game. You've got to go out. You've got to call your plays. And I hope this coaching staff isn't going to be afraid to throw at this drive. After the incompletion, it's second and ten from their own 25. Couldn't connect on first down, now back to the air. And the pressure gets there. And down he goes at the 18. And how about this defense? They got the donut going. And, and here's one thing I'll tell you about the donut. Late in the game, you're talking about on the field. We want to finish this thing and keep that zero on the scoreboard. No matter who's in the game, who we've rotated, everybody's trying to get a zero up there. It's third down now, and they ought to be able to get off one more play before the two-minute warning. We hit the two-minute warning, and this offense is desperate to make something happen and do it in a hurry. This defense has kept them backed up. Now one more stop, and they can get off the field on third and long. Right down the middle. It's caught downfield. Really nice job there by both guys, the throw and the catch, to work that defense and get the first down. The Aggies come to the line with a fresh set of to throw on first down. And the pressure gets to him. Down goes the quarterback. The defense puts the exclamation point on the day. They have had a wonderful day, man. Doing everything great. Just You could tell they were dialed into what was going on. And now just throw another sack in the equation. Hitting the quarterback, being disruptive. They've been all over the field. First down sack, pushes it back. Now it's second down. Back to throw, it's Wegman. And here comes the pressure, and there he goes down again. And man, is that a just indictment of the day. Your quarterback getting drilled late in the football game. This offense has sputtered. They haven't found any kind of good rhythm. They haven't done things that, that really gives your coach confidence and, and makes you want to believe in them. This offense has a lot of work to do before their next football game. And whatever they did on first and second down, don't do that anymore. Third and very long. Comes up. And this defense is bringing the heat another sack. You've got to love what you're seeing if you're the head coach of this team because your defense is simply not resting on their laurels and they're playing until their zero's on the clock. They've got a massive lead. We're late in the fourth quarter and they're still getting sacks. The Aggies send out the punt team to kick it away. He's going to try to flip the field with this one. And good work by the coverage team to knock down the return man. Here come the Irish back on offense. Now the chance to take a knee and just put the finishing touches on this victory. Yeah, and this offense has done their job, man. They've been so productive, built the lead. Listen, their defense has pulled their weight as well. But now, Jesse, you get to exhale, you get to breathe, and you know we got the W and we played well. Oh, look out! He's at the 20. And we have breaking news. They score yet another touchdown. Man, this has been a complete performance. The defense has been lights out. And the offense, obviously, just continues to pour it on. This is what you call having a great day. Putting it all together, offense, defense, complimentary football. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. What a way to send a message. Huge play in the running game. One snap and you've got a touchdown on the board. They'll try to follow that last touchdown with an onside kick. They're on it and they get it back for another drive. The legal touch is coming. Okay. 
So the decision has been made, and the coach will take the penalty. First down here for the offense. Looking to throw, it's Wegman. Feeling some heat. Coming after it. And the defense gets to the quarterback. If I had told you that one of the best quarterbacks in all of college football was going to have less than 200 yards passing in this game, you might not have had that on your bingo card, but that's what's in fact happened. This defense has done an outstanding job getting pressure on him like they did right there getting the sack. A big play for the defense with the first down sack. Now, advantage D as the offense comes up on second. And the pressure is coming in, and they get him again. The defense will use a timeout here. There are 16 seconds left to play. I'm not positive, but that first down marker might be in the next county. It's third and long. Let's see if he's got enough juice in that arm. And this defense goes back to back sack. Jet. They get the timeout call with seven seconds left on the clock. Texas A&M will have to boot it away. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. Looking for a block, it's Young. They'll bring him down, the clock is at zero, and that is how this one will wrap up. The old coaching cliche go 1-0 every week, and for the first week, they get it done. That great start to the season, that's what you want. You want to come out, find a way to win. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. You're going to find things to work out throughout the season, but 1-0, that's where you want it to be. And I think if you're the coaching staff of this winning team, you've got to like what you just see. First game of the year, there was tremendous effort on the field. Guys flying around, flying to the football, trying to make the plays necessary to win this game. They definitely made a few mistakes, but that's what practice is for. But if you're the coaching staff, I think you're very, very positive right now moving forward. That's going to do it for us. For Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, our entire broadcast team, I'm Reese Davis. This has been another presentation of EA Sports College Football.